So the first thing I really wanted to talk about is the um, meta of the game. Um, so as far as the meta goes in Darkest Dungeon right now in this uh, in the in the circus, you basically get two compositions that work. The first one is a stress-based composition, which is basically what it says on the tin. Uh, you try to get your opponent to just have those chain hard attacks and to break their formation like that. So you try to get them to 200 stress as, as soon as you can without losing your characters. Um, and this is a very versatile composition uh, because you can have like a multitude of characters there. Um, I'm going to show you my composition first. I'll tell you about the possible variations there as well. So let's just go into my game. Um, so what you can see over here is my current composition, which is the Occultus, the Abomination, the Man at Arms and the Hellion. And they're doing an excellent job at what, you know, I'm using them for. Um, because they do a lot of stress damage, uh, they have a lot of utility, they are very mobile, they allow you to shift your opponents, move them around the map a lot. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically a very, very strong composition. Now we can make, as, basically you can make several uh, changes here to improve it or just kind of to make it... I wouldn't say improve it, I, f I feel like my composition is very strong, right? But you can just kind of make several changes to uh, add some variety to it. So I have seen people running uh, the Hound Master a lot, and this is a very strong character, but he gets focused easily, right? So if you play against Mark compositions, the Hound Master is probably the most vulnerable character you may have, since he's like way, way less, um, um, he's like far less survivability than everybody else. He does a lot of stress damage though with this, and this is also bleed, which kind of puts your enemies under constant pressure. So that's why he gets focused down very quickly by your enemies. They, they just know that if they don't kill him as soon as they can, uh, he will eventually do a lot of damage. So he's a very strong option, right? Other than that, you can probably run an Antiquarian who has this Blight and AoE um, stress as well, but this is what like significantly less. Instead of 12, he, uh, he only, she only has 8 um, stress on this spell. And obviously she has also Flash Powder, which is 20 stress, a single target. Another very strong option is a Plague Doctor, especially when you go with the Occultist. Uh, these two guys can do a lot of damage. So um, you basically uh, use the stealth ability here. So you use the Stygian Embrace on the Plague Doctor who is in the final row, in the back row. And then you start spamming the, um, well, whatever reflows your boat. Like if you want to do the damage, you do this, the Plague Grenade. If you don't, then you can obviously use um, Blinding Gas, which is 25 stress, which is really huge, actually. That's very, very strong. So those are the two options uh, that you can probably have. Uh, I feel like Abomination, I use Abomination mostly for crowd control, so you can obviously use somebody else in his place. I just like how it works. Like the, the shuffles, the distortion to the enemy composition is a, a very, very huge asset of, of this. Um, so the only stress abilities that uh, um, Abo has are the Transform, which is a stress for three rounds, which is very, very good because this is basically like, um, you know, the, the thing that Antiquarians have to do every turn, right? And this is a free action because once you transform, you can use all those abilities. So you just basically deal free horror uh, for uh, you know very no very little um, uh, price, very low price for that, right? And they have quite a lot of utility skills. And you can obviously, if you're in human form, if you're in row two or three, you can use Beast's Bile, which it gives you repose and inflicts stress and blight. And every time you are attacked, you actually inflict additional stress and additional blight. So this character is very very strong, especially against Hound Masters. Who, you know have to use the um, the AOE uh, ability that does damage so they always trigger the beast spile and that's that's probably uh, another possibility you can also instead of the Hellion whom I really like because she has the terrifying Yope uh, which is not only a, a stress debuff it is also a accuracy debuff you can use the Crusader in the front in the front row they are very similar in terms of like what they do so here there's this accusation which is minus 20 uh, which is plus 20 stress but the difference between the Accusation and the Yulp is that Accusation actually does damage. So it's a very, very strong ability if you're trying to kind of put a lot of pressure on your opponent. So this is definitely a viable choice. Uh, you also have uh, the Inspiring Cry, which is minus uh, stress, clears Hara, and also gives you Virtue Chance, which is a very nice tool, strong tool against other stress compositions. And then another choice you have is the Crusader, so you can stick a Crusader in there as well. Uh, wait, no, sorry. I meant the flagellant. Sorry. Yeah, 
uh, here, this guy over here. And he has the Reign of Sorrows, which gives stress and a lot of bleeding. It's a very, very strong skill. Uh, he also has a very strong ability to move the mark from himself, which means that you can basically just absorb the mark uh, from your allies and just shift it to yourself, and then you can just heal yourself as well for, for a lot with this. So uh, I think he's like very versatile. Um, you, you can definitely use him as well as uh, you know some of the other backline uh, characters. I mean, he is a frontline, right? So you'd have to kind of make switches. Um, as far as my guys go, uh, obviously Occultus I think a must because he has the Abyssal Artillery which is huge huge hard uh, damage skill because it's just stress over time on two back row characters and you can actually empower it to last four turns with this. So I think this is the, one of the strongest characters right now, basically every single composition will be running him. Um, as we said you can use Antiquarian. Antiquarian has the Festering Vapors, which inflicts stress, and she also has healing. Oh, where is it? Here. So this is the regeneration for three rounds, it's very strong. I don't think she's like extremely viable, uh, but I have faced compositions that were running her and they were very strong. So I guess that's a possibility. As I said, the Cultist is just a very, very flexible character. You can use a multitude of skills if you take a curse or a Hex, you can deal stress damage from any row, even if they pull you close. So that's a, like added bonus, and obviously the Demon's Pull is very, very powerful, because it can really mess up, the, especially the Mark Formations, where you can pull the, I know, the Arblast or the Musketeer to the front row, and they are just virtually useless, right? Or if you go versus stress compositions, you can even like pull enemy Hellions away, or push the Crusaders away, or uh, pull the Plague Doctors towards the front as well, and front row plague doctor doesn't do anything so you have quite a few uh, options here and we have the man at arms here man at arms i think is a core to most of the compositions because of this you will be facing uh wait uh, there are two things actually that man at arms does bolster is great versus other teams like other stress compositions because this allows you to kind of mitigate some of the stress damage and this lasts for the entire battle guys so this is extremely powerful i think it should be in every single uh stress composition because of this and then he deals very nicely with the uh, damage dealing compositions because the bellow actually gives you a debuff minus 20% damage on all enemies and it does inflict stress as well. So what this actually does is, uh, uh, well after if you can keep your man at arms alive for like 2-3 to three turns, he will actually be able to save your ass. Right, that's, that's all uh, that I really mean to say here. Um, because bellow is just so so powerful, right, it just allows you to uh, remove like a significant portion of damage from all your enemies um, and if you wear something that allows you to uh, you know have increased debuff skill chance this is even stronger all right so I'm just saying this is probably one of the strongest characters for those compositions and then as far as the Hellion goes I'm just running uh, the Yop because this is um, a minus 15 accuracy debuff plus 20 stress which is a very powerful tool overall and yeah, uh, I think this is a very, very strong option. As far as the occultist skills go, we can consider even taking out the word reconstruction and just killing um, the uh, Stygian Embrace, because I feel this does basically the same thing. I might actually do this now, because it does very similar things to, to word reconstruction. Um, I'll try this, I'll try this. Uh, but uh, it actually makes your character invisible, so it's more difficult for enemy direct attacks to target that character, right? So it's more difficult for them to kill them, basically. So if they mark your character who is not the occultist, you can just stealth them and get out of the combat, right? So that's a very, very strong thing. Okay, so this is the basic uh, stress composition uh, overview, I think. That's basically all you can run. Uh, I've, that's all I've seen anyway, run. Okay, you can also, by the way, you can run the Vestal because Vestal does have um, uh, the clear horror, which is very strong against stress, right? Uh, so if you, yeah, that, that's that's probably a, a good idea to, to take a vessel if you want to. I mean, she's definitely going to work for you. That's what I mean. Um, but then, like, I, I have a doubt about this, because then if you're playing against stress, you're okay. But if you're playing against normal compositions, Vestal isn't that useful, actually. I mean, yes, stun is great from the third slot. Uh, and for the fourth slot as well, but... I don't think this is uh, like this is good enough. I don't think this is good enough for stress comps, really. Y you can clear horror, sure, but I don't think Vestal brings enough to the table. Maybe with some items. I haven't explored all the items yet, so maybe some item makes her very strong. Um, all right, so this is it for the um, 
for the stress comps. If you people like this bit, you know, remember you can subscribe, you can follow, you can like the video, and we are moving on to the second part.